What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review. This is a very exciting week as 3.7 is now out for Wave 1 backers on the PTU. And we're not going to go over those patch notes because I've already done an extensive review of those patch notes on this channel. So I'm going to link that video in the description as well as put a card in the top right corner of the video. But we did get two lettered patches. We got patch I and patch J for the 3.7 PTU. And for patch I, the most important and one of the few things that I felt like mentioning here was that they updated the ping and passive scan for reliably finding mineable material on planet surfaces as well as asteroid belts. Now this was a change made in 3.6 that either caused a bug or it was an actual design choice that basically I can visually see a rock and know that it's mineable but my ship couldn't detect it on its scanner. So that's obviously not working properly. It is now, and we're gonna be going over this more extensively in a video coming out either Tuesday or Wednesday this week. And I'm really excited to show you guys that. So subscribe if you guys wanna see more videos from me. Now, moving on to the 3.7 J patch, we had two things I wanna share with you. And these are basically bug fixes or updates where Ships with a, or players with a criminal rating can now leave hangars that you have to contact the air traffic controller in order to get out, like uh, Levski, Lorville, Area 18. Now, voice over IP globally should be working as well, and I can confirm that it has occasionally. It's hard to tell because some people may not be using it, but in, in at least one of the servers, it was working for a short period of time, and it was quite enjoyable to just speak to other backers that aren't my Twitch chat or um, people that I play with regularly. It was it was exciting to meet new people. It was great. Uh, now, moving on to roadmap updates. We don't have much here. Basically, they're kind of in that in-between stage where 3.7 is still kind of being worked on, and 3.8 doesn't really seem to have hit its, like, go-no-go no go meeting, so we don't see much, many changes happening in 3.8. So it's hard to tell kind of what's going on right now. Um, there's also like a big chance that citizen con development is affecting what's on the roadmap. Cause that's obviously nothing that they're going to share with us uh, on a roadmap. So it's all supposed to be a surprise. So there's lots of work going on, but we're not seeing it reflected on the roadmap. And, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Now, monthly reports came out this week. So that is quite a big deal. Now, before we get started here with our discussion, the monthly report is very long, very detailed, so I pick out certain points that I think are important to share with you, but like I mentioned before, there's going to be links in the description, there will be a link to the monthly report, and I highly recommend you read it yourself. These are the things that I find important to share with you, but this isn't the entire monthly report. So we're going to start our discussion out with AI, and with the AI, they decided to focus on you sort of being able to distract them or they won't get locked on to you if you're maybe in their peripherals. So the plan seems similar to like Last of Us gameplay or maybe like Hitman where you can throw something and distract them and uh, play a little bit more stealthy, which is pretty cool. Moving on to art, uh, specifically environment art. There was a lot of exciting stuff going on here. New Babbage is now in final art. Full production on Microtech as uh, assets is going on, which means like, you know, trees and, and little props and things like that. Uh, for example, frozen flora, snow-covered forests, fields of ice boulders, frozen oceans. Imagine a dragonfly riding over a frozen ocean. Pretty cool. Mountaintops with extreme weather conditions. Also, the German studio is working on an unannounced location. So this is probably a little hint at a Citizen Con reveal here. Then on to back-end services. Uh, they worked on persistence, so people are starting to talk a little since we heard that Star Citizen Live about where they were thinking about persisting our Alpha UEC as well as ship purchases across wipes. And there seems to be a little bit of work going on in the back-end. Pretty exciting. Now, design. Design, they did, just did some general economy balance. I, I think they're kind of referring maybe to the missions and, and how they lower the prices for some things and raise prices for others. I didn't get a chance to really look at commodities too much yet, but interesting, interested to see what they do there with that. Moving on, they did some an, a new service beacon mission, which is really cool. I actually did it today, I believe, 
uh, yeah, today that as I was recording this video, and they mentioned in the patch notes that there's waves, and what's really cool is the initial price for the mission I did, I think it was about 34, 3,500 credits, or maybe 4,500, doesn't really matter, but basically, as you get to the later waves that they come um, with, you get additional money for each ship that you kill. So the first wave that I was able to get additional money for was 200 credits per ship. Then the next wave was 600 credits per ship. So now we're talking a service beacon mission where I'm making 10,000 credits and it's challenging and it's fun and it's engaging. Uh, unlike bounty missions where you go and fly and kill one ship, use your auto gimbals and it, it feels skillless. Uh, this, this was a little bit more engaging and more fun and I look forward to doing more in the future. Moving on to graphics, they did, uh, they talked about something about coloring distant terrain. So basically, think about Hurston, and if there's a forest, then it's hard to see when you're really far away what the forest biome, or where the forest biome is, and this research and, and implementation should create a situation where, where you're looking at a planet, you, if you fly towards the green part, you know that you're going towards a forest. Uh, hopefully, similarly to the, you know, really macro views of Earth, you can see deserts, you can see forests, you can obviously see oceans, right? Things like that. Then moving on to level design, they prototyped several new missions. This is, I think this is coming along really nicely uh, with the building block system. I think this is, that UI system is what's been holding everything up, and all of a sudden, once building blocks come in, now we're talking about making all sorts of new missions. So the missions mentioned in the monthly report were recovering a hijacked ship, solving puzzles in a new location, probably that new location we mentioned earlier, capturing points, and as well as helping the criminal community. They also are working on another iteration of the law system. I was calling it like law system version 2 or 3. I don't really know because this is kind of version 2 and 3.7 where they are focusing on paying fines, removing crime stats, impounding ships, which is a big one, and also they're starting a major overhaul on the mission system in preparation for server-side OCS. Pretty exciting. Turbulent. Turbulent. Developing new services for progression, persistence across patches. We can only hope that this is a 3.8 feature that we're going to see on the roadmap soon, but we're all just speculating now. But the fact that they're working on it is super, super exciting because that's the one major thing that's missing. The second that we can progress from 3.8 to 3.9, 3.9 to 4.0, you kind of have a video game there where right now we're still in that test bed feel, if you ask me. Then video updates. Uh, we don't really have any updates for this video this week. We obviously don't have an Inside Star Citizen because they're doing their three weeks off. The one thing that I want to ask you guys, and this is kind of an opinion I have as well as some of the people in my Twitch chat have had, is now that you're doing staggered development, what is the reasoning for taking three weeks off? Because the reasoning for taking three weeks off previously was that, okay, the teams that we're working with during those three weeks are in their uh, scheduling phase. So there's nothing to show you. There's nothing to talk about. We're still trying to figure all that out. But with staggered development, somebody's working on 3.8. Why aren't we talking to them now, right? But so it just kind of asks the question. Uh, it's, it's a little weird because the reasoning for the three weeks off doesn't seem viable right now. But... At the same time, like I mentioned earlier, it's highly likely that a majority of the studio not focused on Squadron 42 is focused on CitizenCon, not necessarily any 3.8 feature work that they're ready to show us uh, what our experiences may be like. So there's also the three weeks off in preparation for CitizenCon in general for the video team. So... The idea of it being this time off, I have no issues with. But I am curious for future patches and future uh, quarters, what's going to happen because they should have work going on continuously starting now. So, yeah. Also, 
there was a Star Citizen Live. It was a game dev Star Citizen Live, and honestly, there wasn't much to take away from it. So I'll just kind of leave some B-roll up there. You can check it out. They basically were designing ship weapons off of a few uh, images on the screen. And it was cool, but it, it was something that I highly suggest you check out on your own time. But we won't be sharing too much here. And then for the miscellaneous stuff, we had the Mantis QA. Excuse me, the Mantis Q&A. I tend to mess that up, and the commenters in the YouTube video like to... Tell me how stupid I am. So I apologize. The Mantis Q&A is up. And some of the discussion points that I want to share with you, as always, there will be more on there. And you, should go, you guys should check it out yourself. And there will be links in the description. Were uh, questions like, will your quantum enforcement devices be able to go on other ships? And the answer was, in the future, yes. Uh, they're they're going to be put on utility item ports, uh, which we don't have access to as of yet and they won't be as powerful as ships like the Mantis that have built-in devices. Also, is it illegal? Uh, in certain jurisdictions, they say yes, but it will not give you a crime stat for the release of the ship in 3.7. Um, personally, I would have liked to see that mechanic be required, as in uh, you are gaining aggression towards another player's ship, uh, therefore it would be illegal. Uh, in 3.7, that would have been a requirement for the ship to go live for me personally, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Obviously, everything's iterative, the game's being developed. If it's not fully featured, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, yeah, I, I just would have liked to have seen that. Uh, they asked in the Q&A, any counters to the uh, Mantis here? And for now, they're saying it's power heavy and has a long cooldown, uh, expect it for about several minutes cooldown, but long term they would they want to allow players to avoid interdiction by adjusting their quantum drive in some way. Uh, it was very vague, and I assume that that was intentional. Uh, like we heard a, a few weeks back on Star Citizen Live, they're not really making these heavily uh, detailed design documents on things because once they start working on it, that's where they know their limitations. And right now they're not working on that. It's very clear. So they don't know what their limitations are, so they were vague. Um, is there a size limit to what a Mantis can grab out of Quantum and prevent from Quantum traveling? And not at release, but it will be balanced later. So for now, you're just going to pull whatever. Uh, other than that, there was a sneak peek in the uh, weekly newsletter in your email. And it showed the visor updates where we're seeing temperature and uh, more kind of like 3D holographic effects on our visor. It was pretty cool. So I'll put that up so you guys can check that out. And uh, other than that, there was the Squadron 42 monthly report that was also in your email. I have that in the link in the description, but it didn't really give too, too much information uh, to add to today's show. So... That's going to do it for me today, guys, or this week, I should say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment below on anything we discussed today, your thoughts on it, and subscribe, like I said earlier, for more videos coming soon. I'm super excited. I can't wait. 3.7 so far is a uh, wonderful patch. I'm not trying to jinx it, but uh, I went through the mission list and did every single mission on the mission list and two of them didn't work they were the bounty missions but i had a dev in the chat and we had all the information on screen so he can try and nail down what was happening there so looking forward to seeing what happens with that have a great one everybody i'll see you guys next week